Hi everybody, my name is Richard Obrik and I will be uh, guiding you in this tutorial through the functionalities and the solvers that are available in the POP toolbox. Now, in the POP toolbox we have um, uh, several different types of solvers available implemented um, which represent uh, some of the most efficient solvers out there. Now, let's first look at the interface and the way the interface is used to solve multiparameter programming problems. Then we will look at the command window uh, use of it and then we will in the, in the end also see how we can verify whether or not a solution is correct. Now first let's launch the interface and um, as you can see we have the, um, the solver here. Now uh, this is the general environment of the solver. Uh, you have several options in fact at your disposal, tolerance, time limit and so on. Um, the LP and QP solvers uh, uh, embedded or let's say um, links to which are available through POP are CPLEX, NUG and MATLAB. If you would uh, like to have any other LP or QP solvers included here then just drop us an email at parak.tamu.edu and we will do our best to include them. Equally um, we have uh, four different types of uh, MPLP and MPQP solvers geometrical, combinatorial, connected graph based approach and the link to the MPT toolbox. Now if you would like to use this link you have to download MPT separately um, and again if you would like us to include other solvers that are not listed here then dro drop us an email and we'll do our best to include them. Similarly yeah, there's a progress bar that you can switch on and off which uh, allows which um, displays a progress bar on the state of the solution. Global solvers that are available those are only relevant for mixed integer programming problems so MPM LPs and MPM IQPs. Um, you can use CPLEX, you can use the inbuilt MATLAB functions, you can use Antigone and Baron via links to GAMS, link to GAMS, so you need GAMS with full versions of Antigone and Baron enabled to be able to use this link, as well as the enumeration, uh, the exhaustive enumeration of all possible combinations of binary variables. Now, uh, and last but not least, we have the comparison procedure where um, we have four different comparison procedures um, which are basically necessary to obtain a uh, refined upper bound after a new uh, MP, uh, the MPQP of the new candidate integer solution has been found. Um, and uh, those are explained in the user manual as well as in the paper and uh, we just refer to, the, um, to that place and also to the re references given therein to give you more details about that. Now, in order to see how this is working, let's first generate a random problem. First, let's generate an MPQP, let's say, of two parameters and three continuous variables. And let's just generate this problem real quick, and we get the random problem. And by the way, if you want to know more about the problem generated, then there's also a separate video that tackles that. Now, if we go to the solver, then we can now select this problem from the workspace. And in fact, you can see this is an MPQP, we have three continuous variables, two parameters, 11 constraints. Let's just use the default options. By the way, note that there the global solver and the uh, comparison procedure have disappeared here because they're not relevant for continuous problems. So we use the default options, we solve the problem, and uh, this results in eight critical regions uh, and a solution time of about a uh, quarter of a second. Uh, we can plot the solution now, we can uh, plot the critical region, and uh, this is in fact the partitioning that we obtain. Um, if you, for instance, now close this and would like to get the plot again or uh, display the solution, you can also again select the results from uh, this space and you can have again these two options available right here. Now, in terms of uh, binary variables, let's uh, look at that as well. We can go to the generator um, where um, we can, for instance, select an MPMILP. We again have two parameters, three continuous variables, two binary variables, let's say. We generate the problem. Okay. We go back to the solver and um, we select the random problem. Now, this is an MPMILP. And uh, he here, this also has changed. And now we get the uh, continuous variables, binary variables, parameters, 34 inequality constraints this time and we use the default option so we can now try to solve this problem again this is a random problem so I don't know how long this will take in order to be for the problem to be solved
So now the solution has been obtained. Now this has taken 18 seconds and um, has resulted in 115 critical regions. Um, and again, we can uh, plot this, for instance, we can plot the critical regions. Uh, and we see here, this is the, uh, the partitioning of the solution. All right. And now these are the different colors of the, of the critical regions. Let's consider one more aspect. For instance, let's go back here and let's select an MPQP. And let's say we have three parameters. All right. We generate the problem and we plot this and we solve it. Then, um, excuse me. Then, and we solve this problem. Then, uh, once the problem has been solved, if we want to plot this, um, we have to somehow get a 2D representation. Right? So if we now say we want to plot the critical regions, it indicates which parameters. We have to fix one of the parameters to a nominal value and then plot a uh, slice of the other two. So let's say we fix this now to zero and uh, press OK. And then the plot we get is with a fixed uh, zero. Uh, theta 3 equals to zero fixed in the, um, in the problem. And this again uh, is the slice through that. We're currently working on uh, also obtaining a 3D plot uh, capabilities within uh, within POP, but uh, so far this this feature has not been uh, finalized. Now, um, in terms of the command window, uh, when we go to the command window, let's just repeat the steps we just did for the interface of the command window, so you can see how this uh, works. Um, so let's first generate a random problem. Uh, we define some sizes. Let's say we have three continuous variables. We have two binary variables, uh, two uh, parameters, and then we saw we generate the problem, uh, problem generator, PQP size, enter. All right, and then um, if we now want to solve this problem, what we a simple thing we can do. Um, is mpqp problem enter and this has now solved the problem it is this random problem that we generated by the way all these problems that we solved are all different because they're all randomly generated now this specific problem that we solved has 28 critical regions and um, the second output we get is the timing interest uh, information which we can see that the overall t solution time was 0 0.5 seconds and then the most time was spent on checking uh, the optimality conditions. We had 52 uh, different uh, active sets considered and 117 iterations. More details on what exactly all of this means can be found in the user manual. Um, if you now would like to change any of the options um, that have been used to solve the problem, this can be done using the option set function, which is the most called function in POP itself where all the options that are used within POP are specified. So if you would like to use a different LP, LP solver, a different MVP solver, or um, you have it, then uh, you can change this here. So for instance, if we change this to MPT now, then um, we, can, uh, we can do this, and then we go back to the command window, we run the same, same thing that we had, we run this, and um, this should solve the problem using MPT, and in fact, it has done that. 28 seconds and it's taken three seconds now to do this. Um, in terms of the um, MPML, PM, MPMIPP problems, so problems featuring binary variables, let's uh, real quick define um, to uh, a binary term as well. So we have in this size term, we have three continuous variables, two parameters, two binary variables, and uh, we run the same uh, thing again. So, but now we uh, we define an MPMILP, and um, now if we want to solve this problem again, we can do the same thing. But now the function we use, the wrapper we use, is MPMIQP. We press enter, and now the solution has been obtained. Note that now the solution that has been the thing that has been used is MPT as a solver, and we can change that here again to the graph-based solver and see what we obtain. In fact, you see we get similar results. Now, um, uh, and the, from the plotting perspective, the, same, the things work similarly. Now, if you would like to plot the solution that you have obtained there, you can simply say plot solution sol, and then 
CR if you only want to crit plot the critical regions. This is one critical region as we've seen. If we get a different we get a different problem, so let's say we uh, generate again and we solve again. We now have two critical regions for this specific example. So we can plot this and we have this result. Now similarly if we now generate we add a third uh, the parameter dimension we alter it to be three parameters and we generate the problem let's say an MP MPQP right and then we solve this which has given us 113 regions then if we say plot solution then if we were just to, to do this then it will tell, will tell me we need to specify the va values of the parameters because we have more than two so now let's do that real quick so um, what we'll do, NAN, NAN, which means not a number, these are the ones that we display. The last one, for instance, zero. Um, excuse me, I got the uh, nomenclature syntax wrong there. And then this is displayed. So this is again fixed, this to zero. And then uh, this is the plot of that region. Now these are not 49 regions, so we have a total of 113 regions and 49 of them are available when theta, um, theta 3 is equal to 0. Um, now a last um, comment on verifying the solution. Now, um, in order to make sure, or to not to make sure, but to uh, be able to judge whether or not a particular solution that has been obtained is in fact accurate, we have developed a function called verify solution. Now verify solution is um, very simple. What it does, it seeds 5,000 points in the parameter space and then uh, for uh, fixes those points and solves a deterministic problem and compares that solution with the solution we get from the uh, from the parametric programming problem now if the solution is the same uh, for all 5000 points then it's a very strong indicator that we have in fact obtained the correct solution now there is some cases where for instance there's one or two points "Quote unquote wrong," which might be the result of, for instance, numerical inaccuracy. When you have very small critical regions, those things might happen. Whereas, if you have, for instance, 50 or 100 points which are inaccurate, then um, then this is a very strong indicator that there has been some sort of mess, uh, mix up, some sort of problem within the solution. When that happens, or if that happens, then um, oftentimes it has to do with the specific algorithms used. Uh, to, uh, to solve the problem. So for instance, if you have used a certain multi-parametric programming algorithm, then uh, you should change that or change a comparison procedure for the mixed integer problem. These things occur because our software, like any software, is not perfect and there is, um, there is always some sort of um, uh, issues that can occur and we're working very hard to make sure these don't happen, but this is just a tool given to you such that you can see whether or not the solution is correct. Now let me show you how this works. Is For the solution we just obtained, we say OK equals to verify solution. And then the solution we have was stored in the structured array sol. And um, the problem was called problem. So we have this, we press enter. And um, yeah, I mistyped, I apologize. So we click enter, we press enter. And we have to wait now for the 5,000 problems to be solved and for the corresponding um, MPQP to be evaluated in those 5,000 points. And if OK is equal to 1, this means that it's OK. And if equal equals to 0, then it's not OK. In this case, it's been equal to 1. Um, and uh, this means that the solution is, in fact, we can almost guarantee that it is the correct solution. Um, with this, I would like to close, and if you have any further comments or questions regarding the solution capabilities of POP, or if you would like to us to add any functionalities or comment, point out mistakes and errors that you have encountered, please don't hesitate to contact us at parok.tamo.edu. Um, thank you very much.